Midnight Facts for Insomniac. <laughs> I just learned something. Oh, I'm having fun now. Yeah, it could be a cat, the wonderful. I'm, you know what? I am going to name my next cat, cat Wonderpuss. The Wonderpuss Photogenicus. And I will take so many pictures, it will be accurate. Yes. It will be all over Instagram. The Wonderpuss Photogenicus. <laughs> This one is going to be kind of nostalgic for us, I think. A throwback to our older, like, random animal facts episodes. Oh, sweet! Yay! Those were always fun, so I'm looking forward to this. And speaking of older episodes, at some point in the distant past, we recorded an episode about humans with superpowers. We did, yes! It was kind of a hot mess. Uh, Listen back to it. I mean, most of our early episodes were kind of a hot mess. It was intermittently fun. You were pretty sauced by the end of it. I mean, yeah. You started out super coherent, and yeah. then toward the end, you were talking very slowly, which is always... You know. But uh, regardless, the word superpowers in that title uh, should have probably been in air quotes, mm. because many of the so-called superpowers, as you will remember, turned out to be more like extremely unique disabilities. Yes. Like stretchy skin or particularly dense bones. Right. There were a few benefits to those conditions, or I guess what could be framed as benefits, But most people would not choose to be blessed with any of those so-called powers. Yeah, having truly ossified bones is awesome if somebody's regularly kicking you in Muay Thai. Awesome-fied. Yeah, awesome-fied. Fucking wow. Yeah, you said that. That's that's one of my jokes that you just said. I'm happy with it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Standing firm. (laughs) Standing firm, like you had ossified bones. Uh, Um... But yeah, if you're doing Muay Thai, that's great, except you're mostly just on the hitting side because if you have those maximum ossified bones, you're not real flexible. Well, it's kind of like how, you know, blindness might result in like a heightening of some other senses. Right. And that's kind of cool, but like gaining a couple of enhanced attributes that are able to sort of partially compensate for the loss of your most important attribute Mm. is not necessarily worth the loss of that attribute in the first place. Right. Like I don't want my sense of smell to go away and then suddenly be able to like... My knees can sense pheromones. Like, I just, it's not. Yeah, the, mm. yeah it's like I crashed my car, but now my skateboard is 5% faster. Right. And it's not a good trade. No. So in that episode, we determined that there aren't any individual humans who have truly superhuman abilities. But if you look at humans as a collective and kind of compare us to other species, all humans sort of do have superpowers. These are the powers we've developed that make us the dominant organism on Earth. Opposable thumbs, intelligence, self-awareness to varying degrees, depending on the individual. Huh? Right. Evolution has given us some amazing gifts in the brain department. Our ability to brain is unparalleled. But when it comes to physical adaptations, we simply cannot compete with the wonders of the animal kingdom. No, not even a little bit. Super strength, the ability to fly... Many of these stereotypical powers from comic books are commonplace in the animal kingdom. Yeah, bro. Like, the thing that everyone seems to forget is, like, your Yorkie is a teacup. It can still tear your finger off because its entire body is muscle. Yeah. I mean, I'm not scared of your average chihuahua, but, I mean, they can still smell their favorite uh, dog anus from, you know, two blocks away. And I can't smell my favorite dog anus from even 10 centimeters away. <laughs> it's so unfair. <laughs> I'm so bitter. I'm just looking down the floof like, what is your butt smell like? And some creatures might even be better compared to gods than superheroes. Okay. For instance, when you think of the Roman god of love, Cupid, what image comes to mind for you, Duncan? Traditionally. Traditionally. Uh, I picture... Jack Black or uh, uh, what's what's his co-singer? Yeah, the other Tenacious D guy. I'm not, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I think of the other guy more yeah. bald. Uh, yeah. So him with a bow that you bought at Kmart and arrows that you probably bought at a porn shop. Okay. Well, the real life Cupid mm-hmm. is a slug. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say that again. And also a ninja. The ninja slug, Ibicus racialae, is native to the Asian island of Borneo Mm. and has a unique mating ritual. It shoots what are referred to as love darts made of calcium carbonate into the slimy body of a prospective mate. These harpoon-like darts are full of hormones that increase the likelihood of a coupling. 
That poor woman. You thought catcalling was bad. God damn. <laughs> I see why this is necessary, though. Mm, see, really? I, I feel like even if I had been born a slug myself, uh -huh. you would have to drug me to make me fuck a slug. <laughs> You're just walking around in a cell of self-hatred. <laughs> I would not blah, be blah, blah. a happy slug. No. You just blah. curl up under a rock and be like, salt me. <laughs> <laughs> The ninja slug is particularly unique looking. It is green and kind of spiny. And when it sleeps, it curls its long tail around its body like a cat. So its discoverers were initially going to name it Ibicus felis, mm. feline. Uh, but when they found out that it was a drug-slinging date rapist gastropod, they instead <laughs> named it after the girlfriend of one of the discoverers. Her name was Rachel, so Ibicus Rachel A. Damn, that's a salty <laughs> ass dude. What the fuck did that poor woman do to and that dude? It was dude? his current girlfriend. This is not an ex either. Although, you know, no word as to her reaction, but I'm assuming she is now an ex girlfriend. Ex -girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. What girl is like, oh, you named me a, after a rapist slug? I have to say, the, the, the sleeping with the tail curled around thing is kind of cute. That is cute, except for the fact that, yeah, the, the whole like rohypnol on a dart mm. is a little sus. Not great. Mm. Yeah. Next superpowered critter. Yes. The mythological figure Lazarus rose from the dead. Yeah. Uh, so did Jesus. And so too does the common wood frog. Every year in North America, thousands of wood frogs are frozen during the winter months. Their tiny bodies locked in ice for weeks on end. And yet, due to a unique adaptation in their cells, they are resurrected in spring, just like our Lord and Savior. I brought this up in one of our previous episodes yeah. uh, where I was talking about, I thought, I, I think I said it was a toad, but yeah, it's a frog mm -hmm. and it's, you know, been thought of as the possible gateway to, uh, cryogenics. Yeah. Cryogenics and hibernation to, to other plants. The mechanism behind the frog's resurrection is interesting. Mm -hmm. As the season becomes colder in anticipation of being frozen, the wood frog's cells react by producing urea and glucose in large quantities. And this combination of sugar and waste product insulates the cells from bursting. So the frog's superpower is sweet pea, but not like not like the term of affection yeah, or the no. legume. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, delicious, uh, life-saving urine. It's pea from a diabetic. It's, mm, kind of. Yeah. From a National Geographic article, quote, Once the first ice crystals reach a wood frog, its skin freezes. The frog becomes hard and crunchy, unquote. Mmm, frogsicles says professor of biochemistry Kenneth Story of Carleton University in Ottawa, quote, when you drop it, it goes clink, unquote. Who the fuck is this creep <laughs> just dropping frogs? Yeah, Canadians, you might want to reevaluate some of your research funding. Yeah. If you are an alumnus of Carleton, maybe ask how much of your tuition went to crunchy frog dropping. <laughs> Okay, that just sounds like a totally different thing. <laughs> I wonder if there's a whole field of uh, amphibian impact studies. You just salamander there are. thwacking and yeah, frog but they're, they're not tossing. kinetic. They're the, what is the impact of the environment on amphibians? Oh, there you go. Not the amphibians on the environment. No. Well, that made it sad. Yeah. No. Next critter. Yes. So I know you're familiar with the X Men character Mystique. Yes. Well, there are exactly zero humanoid creatures that we know of with the power of shape-shifting, but there are hundreds of animals that utilize some version of mimicry to protect themselves. Walking stick insects, uh, caterpillars that impersonate snakes, there are chameleons, obviously, that can change color, but no critter embodies the power of a shape-shifter better than the Wonderpus photogenicus. Um, <laughs> I know I'm 12 and I'm just stuck here, but could you say that again? You're not familiar with the Wanderpus Photogenicus? I, I'm not. I mean, not outside of Pornhub. If someone on OnlyFans is not using that moniker. What is wrong with you? You are welcome. Yes. And pay us. Yes. <laughs> Send me your money. This animal's superpower is its awesome name. That I think yeah. no matter what... No, no matter what you can do. <laughs> Whatever I say next pales in comparison. Comparison, yeah. The Wonderpus was discovered fairly recently. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to not laugh at that. In the 1980s in Indonesia and wasn't officially classified and described until 2006. Here's an explanation of how this class of octopus, uh, including the Wonderpus and the Mimic octopus, function. Why are you? 
I can't. Every time I see Wonder Puss in my head, it's either an amazing cat or a vagina of magic. Yeah, it could be a cat, the Wonder Puss. You know what? I am going to name my next cat, cat Wonder Puss. <laughs> the Wonder Puss Photogenicus. And I will take so many pictures, it will be accurate. Yes. It will be all over Instagram. <laughs> So, quote, mimic octopuses have uh, been seen to copy the appearance and behaviors of lionfish, flatfish, jellyfish, stingrays, mantis shrimp, and sea anemones. It is claimed that they've been seen impersonating at least 15 different species, unquote. Damn. The octopus intelligently chooses an animal from its repertoire to, like, to mimic mm. based on the specific predator it is facing. Quote, for example, a mimic octopus has been observed under attack by a damselfish. It proceeded to bury itself and six tentacles in the sand, leaving the other two pointed in opposite directions, and thereby mimicking the movement of a sea snake, unquote. Huh. Smart. Smart AF. That's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, everyone has seen that video where the scuba guy scares the octopi from going one place. Or the octopus, excuse me, I, I pluralized it and I didn't mean to. Yeah, to. Yeah. But anyway, it goes from one place to another place and then it's just part of the rock. And suddenly it looks mm -hmm. like a fucking reef. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, they are very impressive. The Wonder Puss and the Mimic Octopus's <laughs> shape-shifting ability are made possible by special cells called chromatophores, mm -hmm. which are shared by a number of aquatic creatures, such as some fish and amphibians. Uh, but in the case of octopi, a.k.a. cephalopods, these chromatophores are unique. They are neuromuscular organs capable of reacting in real time to conscious neural commands from the animal. Yeah. Quote, the chromatophores react to stimuli and facilitate interaction with their environment. Each organ contains an elastic sac containing pigment, which is attached to the radial muscle of the octopus. When the octopus becomes aroused, the radial muscles contract, which expands the chromatophores. In contrast, when the octopus is in a relaxed state, the chromatophores will retract into the elastic sac. Unquote. Um, <laughs> very sexual. Yeah, uh, sounding mm, mm. all this talk of arousal and contraction and <laughs> elastic sacs. <laughs> But the bottom line is that the octopus can select at will any pattern of coloration that it deems advantageous. When it is not pretending to be an entirely different creature, the Wonderpus is very cool looking on its own. Mm. Uh, it has mottled white spots over a reddish brown background, and the body patterns shift and change as the octopus ages, becoming more complex over time. Like other octopi, the Wonderpus has another X-Men caliber superpower, mm. the ability to regenerate limbs and to heal super fast. Nice. Octopi also extremely smart, as we mentioned. Uh, basically, they're extraterrestrial supervillains, and they're going to take over the world. All right. I'm not going to go with supervillains, but I'm definitely going to go... I, I could I could go 50-50 on extraterrestrials. Sure. As usual, I welcome our octopus overlords <laughs> and will immediately betray the human race. <laughs> you can count on Shane. So visual mimicry is useful when it comes to repelling predators, mm -hmm. uh, but there's another form of mimicry that is equally useful and has the ability to not only repel, but also attract or confuse or delight or creep people the fuck out. You're talking about my teenhood. What? What? <laughs> I'm going to severely date us here mm -hmm. as usual, but do you remember that guy from the police academy movies? He was like famous for being able to reproduce noises. Ah, uh, yes. Car alarms and police sirens, etc. Mostly a 70s kung fu movie overdubbing. That too, yeah. Well, the Australian lyrebird is like that guy on steroids. Yikes. Lyrebirds can live up to 30 years and are passerine birds, or passerine, meaning they perch. So their feet feature three toes that are oriented forward and then one facing back for like gripping tree limbs. Mm -hmm. They're large birds. Males can be 35 inches long. And the male also has an impressive, almost peacock caliber tail that fans out in a hash mark pattern. You kind of have to see it. It's very cool. I'll post it in the Discord. Mm. During mating season, the males sing up to four hours a day, and their song incorporates the cry of other birds, as well as elements of their surroundings. Koalas, dingoes, possums, etc. If there are humans in the area, they will add everything from chainsaws to crying babies to car engines to camera shutters into their repertoire. That sounds like the world's most amazing and most annoying bird ever. I've got a bit of a liar bird clip. Let's see. He does a perfect hammer. His drill is a bit too good. His hand saws sharp. His chainsaws a ripper. And he's got a jackhammer off Pat. Fucking what? You got to see these. They have it on YouTube all over the place. 
Uh, check out the liar bird. He's, he's, he's no joke. That's nuts. It sounded like she was just moving through like a, a board like ours. Man. Yeah. Bang, burn. That's what we need. If this was like Flintstone style studio, we would just have a liar bird sitting there and we would just like, you know, smack it, smack it on the butt. <laughs> it's <And> a living. <laughs> exactly. Next critter. Mm-hmm. We mentioned the mimic octopus's ability to regenerate limbs, but there is another creature that takes regeneration to the extreme. The adorable, Instagram-friendly aquatic salamanders known as axolotls can respawn tails, spinal cords, even parts of their brains and hearts and eyes. You can picture these creatures, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. The the ones with the gills that look like they're just like, ha, fussy, fussy, fussy. Yes. They are usually depicted as being bright white with three pink fuzzy tentacles on Mm -hmm. each side of their heads where you would think their ears would be. They are very popular in online memes because of their unique appearance and because the mouths of some of these axolotls, specifically the white ones, Mm -hmm. uh, which rarely exist in the wild but are kept as pets, uh, they have upturned corners that make them look like they're constantly happy and smiling. Yes, they will look like they're constantly happy and smiling when they kill us. These salamanders are uh, like the opposite of grumpy cat. They just always look deliriously happy, which is kind of terrifying to me. Anything with an eternal smile freaks me out. Especially if they mostly only look that way in captivity. That's even creepier. Just He's plotting something. It's not a visual podcast, Duncan. I know. <laughs> Just they trying to frighten you. <laughs> they, can't, they can't see <laughs> your creepy smile. Yes. It's easy to figure out why the white ones wouldn't last five minutes in nature. They are incredibly easy for predators to spot. Yeah. I would recommend Googling the wild version of these if you want to get the true axolotl experience. Because those are quite a bit less cute though much more diverse. They can be green, copper, black, brown, etc. Even a color combo called Dirty Luchistic, which gives you an idea of the cuteness deficit. (laughs) Dirty Luchistic. I don't know what Luchistic means, but I feel like it's a slight. So Luchistic is actually the white ones. Those are the like ones that uh, are in captivity. Mm -hmm. And then Dirty Luchistic is uh, self-explanatory. It's the one you flushed. Here's a typical like wild axolotl. Oh, he's still cute. Look at him. He's smiling. He's like, I'm super gross. Give him a hug. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's smiling for any good reason. N- no, he looks like he's smiling because he's going to burrow into your dead flesh. <laughs> it's Most of them sort of resemble like a trout with tentacles and feet is kind of how I see it. Maybe catfish. It's not a great look either way to mm-hmm. me. Kind of like a mutated aquatic lizard fish. Axolotls, they are native to Mexico and were a staple of the ancient Aztec diet. There's not a ton of meat on those bones. And the bones, I guess, are mostly actually cartilage. But uh, these slimy little nine-inch-long amphibians were good enough for a quick snack or maybe a full meal if you had a a basket of axolotls. A (laughs) baxolotl? Now at KFC, (laughs) basket of axolotls. Come on down. Get our (laughs) boxolotls. I like it. Tim, we can move it first. However, being eaten was not a big problem for them. There were so many axolotls at the time. The species was still thriving at the height of the Aztec Empire, but they did not fare as well once the conquistadors arrived. Weird. Yeah. It's a statement that would apply to most of Mexico, I think. Most of the planet, I'd say. During their conquest, the conquistadors drained the lake beds that were the axolotls' habitat. Kind of rude. Mm. And then their descendants went and built a giant polluted city on top of those lake beds. Mexico City, not super hospitable if you are a tiny salamander. Yeah. Or a human, honestly. It's not the greatest place, in my opinion. No, no. Having been there and gotten Montezuma's Revenge, as every yeah. white person does, uh, yeah, I almost died from it. Uh, a week's worth of vomiting. Yeah. Not, a har- not a good selling point. Yeah, probably even worse for an amphibian. Axolotls can regenerate limbs. They can't regenerate a habitat. Right. They are now listed as critically endangered it is estimated that there are as few as 50 to 1,000 of them left in the wild. So, ouch. Damn, son, that took a fucking turn. That was, Jesus. <laughs> How much for your bucket of lottles or whatever. It's yeah, not, box of lottles is not. Bo- box of lottles not happening. Or they would just be really, really expensive. The yeah. box of lotto, if, do you know how? $2,000 per box of lotto. exclusive these box of lottles are? Yeah. Get them while they last. Yeah. There's 50 of these things in the wild. Ugh, it's not funny. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But they're doing fine in captivity. The white ones are going to endure forever. If something is cute enough, as we have talked about in the past, it's going to survive. Yeah. Axolotls have been studied extensively by scientists because their remarkable ability to regenerate could potentially lead to massive medical breakthroughs. 
In fact, not only are they able to regrow limbs and vital organs, they accomplish all of this without any scarring whatsoever. Very useful if you are in Hollywoods. Yeah, the applications for plastic surgery alone are mind-blowing. Just imagine giant silicone titties with no visible uh, underboob scarring whatsoever. I do every day. <laughs> it would be a milestone in porn and stripper history. We truly live in miraculous times. Side note, uh, completely unrelated, during their mating ritual, male axolotls perform what's called a hula dance by swinging their little lizard fish hips. Nice. Back and forth. Yeah. Work that axolotl, work a work a work that axolotl, work a work If you work only retain one piece of information from this episode, it should be the mental image of an axolotl performing his hula dance. Next critter. Yes. Superman may have been able to leap skyscrapers in a single bound, uh, but a flea can jump more than 100 times its own body length. Hmm. Imagine a basketball player jumping farther than four basketball courts and as high as 25 basketball hoops stacked vertically. That would be the equivalent. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think if Steph Curry did that, I, he would have to have Wolverine's bones. Yeah. And well, healing factor. Physics becomes a problem as you get bigger. The reason they can do it is that they are very small. Uh, but fleas are also incredibly fast jumpers. They can launch in as little as a single millisecond. For those of you at home who don't know what that means, neither do I. <laughs> I spent like 10 minutes just watching fleas take off in slow motion on YouTube. It's very entertaining. Mm. From the videos, it kind of looks like the power comes from their legs. But scientists claim that they actually store energy by bending the pleural arch, which is a part of their exoskeleton that might be sort of likened to a rib cage. And when their exoskeleton snaps back into place, like rubber band style, the flea unleashes its long legs and just rockets forward, covering insane distances in relation to their size. So, carrying on with my metaphor, if Steph Curry could somehow have the most amazing pelvic floor ever and just sort of his way to like going up halfway the Empire State Building. Yeah, he'd have to, re he'd definitely have to work on those abs. Mm -hmm. Lots of Kegels. Sure. The only animal that can beat a flea at jumping is the frog hopper, which is not a frog that hops, but rather a bug that hops over frogs. Yeah, I got that. I was like, hey, frog hopper, that does not define its genus, phylum, anything. What? Well, they're also known as spittle bugs in their nymph phase, and you've probably seen their handiwork. If you've ever noticed a patch of white foam on a plant, that is the result of the baby frog hopper's strange feeding method. They tap into the sap of the plant and then sort of whip it into a protective foam. Hmm. Seems very cozy in there, honestly. Yeah, who doesn't want to sleep in a bed of phlegm? <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not saying it's appealing, but uh, <laughs> it seems they seem to like it. Yeah. In their adult form, they leap from plant to plant. Uh, quote, some species can jump up to 70 centimeters vertically, a more impressive performance relative to body weight than fleas. The frog hopper can accelerate to 4,000 meters per second squared, experiencing over 400 Gs of acceleration. Sweet, unadulterated fuck. That would liquefy yeah. humans. You well, good to have an exoskeleton. I mean, yeah. It would even liquefy human with an exoskeleton. Yeah, I was going to say, on, dude, on. it's not saving you. <laughs> Again, now you're just gel in a fucking suit. It's physics. It's, yeah. It's just the smaller you get, the more crazy shit you can do. But also, the more crazy shit can be done to you by things that are much bigger than you. Because uh, as cool as these frog hoppers are, yeah. I wouldn't switch places. No, because okay. yeah, frog going to fart and you're going to die. <laughs> I could squash one with a sneeze. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're not impressed by tiny creatures that can hop the distance of basically like a single human stride, well, here is a more upscaled version. Red kangaroos can cover up to 25 feet in one hop. Jesus, that's still far. Right? They have a top speed of 35 miles per hour, super fast. Well, uh, yeah, if you're jumping 25 of those feet <laughs> every single time you boing, like it's not going to be hard to get up to 35. We're just doing one and a half of those every time you boing. Yeah, it seems like it would actually be faster than that. Maybe I guess they have to recover after each of these 25-foot leaps. They probably weird <laughs> probably have to <laughs> soak their little paws in, in ice water or something for a minute and then keep going. Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to get an average when you're only getting 10 boings and then they got to <laughs> soak them in a puddle they find nearby because their shit is on fire. Speaking of impact, like yeah. that is really, they must just, they're built like springs, I think, and they just, you know, transfer all that energy out of them. You don't want to, you don't want to be riding on the back of one uh, when they land. You would did, be ejected. Yeah. And I mean, did you ever jump off of swings when you were a kid into sand? Mm -hmm. Like if you did it far enough, 
Like, your feet hurt. Oh, yeah. Not only from the impact, but, like, they kind of burned and tingled a little bit. Yeah. But I don't have extra long paws with uh, fluffy uh, padded beans. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I just have foot foot pads that yeah. hurts when it sands exactly. hits them. They're built for this. <laughs> okay. That is their superpower. <laughs> Next critter. Uh-huh. One of the most coveted superpowers is immortality. Oh, uh, I always thought you were going to say endless erection. My bad. Last more than four hours, you should get that checked out. <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> Have you heard of uh, Turritopsis Dorney? No, but it sounds like an 80s band. Also known as the Immortal Jellyfish, it is one of the few creatures gifted, or maybe cursed, with what is known as biological immortality. Hmm. This tiny jellyfish, and I do mean tiny, it is smaller than a fingernail, it can be killed, it can die via violence, but if it doesn't expire as the result of foul play, it is the only animal on Earth that is able to reverse its aging process, resetting its entire life cycle and continuing to exist in perpetuity. This thing lost a Faustian bargain back when time was immemorial. Like, all right, devil, what you got for me? Well, uh, you're going to be immortal. Literally, you cannot die. Yeah. Unless Sounds good. something kills you. I'll take it. Oh, one caveat now that you've said yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to be about three centimeters wide. Hmm. So uh, literally anything can kill you. I don't know measurements. Is that is that good? You, I mean, compared to plankton, you're killing it. Oh, I don't know what a plankton is, but I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. It's a go. And then plop in the ocean and fuck! <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is another animal that uh, can die quite accidentally. Like, you can inhale one of these and never know. You can pee on one of these and it will die. (laughs) It is actually a very cool-looking little jellyfish. It is a perfectly translucent, bell-shaped little ball, kind of, with a bright red stomach in the center, and it is fringed with up to 90 wispy, hair-like tentacles. Hmm. To understand its superpower, it's helpful to know how jellyfish work, They typically begin as larvae that settle on the seafloor and become polyps, and then they detach and mature into adults known as medusas. So when the adult immortal jellyfish is damaged or starving, it undergoes a borderline magical process known as transdifferentiation. From the Natural History Museum website, quote, when the medusa of this species is physically damaged or experiences stresses such as starvation, Instead of dying, it shrinks in on itself, reabsorbing its tentacles and losing the ability to swim. It then settles on the seafloor as a blob-like cyst. Over the next 24 to 36 hours, this blob develops into a new polyp. That was the jellyfish's previous life stage. And after maturing, medusae bud off. B-U-D. This phenomenon has been likened to that of a butterfly, which, instead of dying, would be able to transform back into a caterpillar and then metamorphose into an adult butterfly once again. Unquote. How has no one compared this to the phoenix? Sure. I mean, because that's what the phoenix does. It's it's not. It doesn't lives actually and then burns and then from the ashes rises up. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't isn't consumed in flame. Obviously, it's it, it's not really? killed. But the, what the, well, the idea with the phoenix is that the phoenix is actually expires and then is reborn. This thing just reverts. It's more like Benjamin Button, right? It like reverts to a fetus again. Basically, mm-hmm. it just re it sort of reabsorbs itself back down into a fetus and then regrows again. I like mine better. Fair, but I think mine is more accurate. Mm-hmm. You lose. <laughs> Branding wins. <laughs> false advertising for the win. Fair enough. Next critter. Yes. So, Duncan, I'll name a few characters and you tell me what they have in common. Okay. Mm -hmm. Storm, Shazam, Magneto, Miles Morales, Thor. Bipedal. That's what you're going with? Yep. (laughs) So you and I are also (laughs) have that in common with Storm and Magneto. Okay. Uh, They all have the power to control and wield electricity as a weapon. Ah. As does the infamous and fearsome creature Electrophorus electricus, a.k.a. the electric eel. Oh, okay. I was going to be like, a.k.a. the electrode? Like, what fucking... Scientists got a little redundant Mm. with the taxonomy there. Yeah. This is the shock shocker shockerus. (laughs) Shock shockerton McShockerus. This is the lobster known as the pinchy pincherson. (laughs) (laughs) Pincherus pectorum... On your Pinkerton. The electric eel is not actually an eel at all. 
It is a fish closely related to the knife fish, which is maybe the only animal that sounds scarier than an electric eel. Yeah. I don't know if I'd prefer to be shocked or shanked by a fish. but I'll go shocked. You can recover without injury or scars from a shock. The, the shock is pretty extreme, though. The electric, uh, not eel, I guess, can stun its prey with shocks up to 860 volts. Okay, I do electrical now. Like, let's see, what is that? That's, I want to say 30 amps, 20 amps? You are converting from one measure that I do not understand to yet another measure that has no meaning for me. So To put it another, uh, to put it another way that everyone can understand. One kilojoule is equal to <laughs> 25 smegamorphs. Smegamorphs? <laughs> from smegma. Hmm. It's the root. I don't know where that. that came from. Yeah, I do. Wash yourself. Um, yeah, I uh, did. Basically, to put it another way, this would be like sticking your finger in an electrical socket. That sounds about right. Yeah. The Electrophorus electricus is nocturnal and has notoriously poor vision, but it can navigate by electrolocation, hmm. sensing the distortion of electric fields. These fish are pretty creepy, They more so than I expected. They're basically like water snakes that continue to keep growing as long as they're alive adding additional vertebrae each year during the entirety of their up to 20-year lifespans, reaching up to six and a half feet in length. I didn't know they got that big. Hmm. This is an ugly bastard. I'm not going to lie. Have you seen these? Yeah, they, they basically look like a waving tentacle attached to a head. They look like long, shriveled electrical penises. They're okay. danger You need penises. to see a doctor. My penis does not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with you, but... Guys, I have seen many uh, penises that I think I think they look like an uncircumcised penis. I'm just throwing that out there. Have, have you seen many? I have the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so the electric organs of this not eel have developed from specialized muscle cells known as electrocytes, capable of storing and discharging electricity, kind of like a battery, and there are three total electrified organs in an electric knot eel capable of generating both low voltage and high voltage shocks. Hmm. An electric knot eel uh, primarily has a diet of not electric fish and will sometimes wrap around its prey to maximize the shock value, so to speak, by applying a shock to more than one area of its body. Well, yeah, sort of like a constrictor. Like you want to increase the level of constriction. It's like a constrictor with a little bonus. Electric eels have even been known to leap out of the water and deliver a shock in self-defense, driving away animals as large as horses. Um, that's not self-defense. That's called an attack. <laughs> self-defense would be if the horse was going after the eel and the eel was like, back off, fucker. But this one was just like, not nah, as too close. We don't, know what that, we don't know what that horse was up to. He might have been menacing the, the eel. Who knows? By chomping on the uh, local flora. That was definitely a preemptive defensive strike. <laughs> that's aggressive. Which is not a thing. <laughs> a preemptive defensive strike is called an offensive <laughs> attack. That's what I have to do when I, next time I slap you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> that was a defensive preemptive strike. I, I preempted <laughs> what you're going to do to I me. I anticipated <laughs> what was going to happen. It's like a precog. You know, yeah. I minority reported your face. <laughs> <laughs> I would <laughs> recommend against precogging across my face. <laughs> that might not work out well for either one of us. Oh, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> we've gone so far from the initial uh, concept here. All I'm thinking is <laughs> like his horse is... And then just eels like, ho! <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck, eel, dude? I was it's, just eating grass. And it's rude. But the eel, and also, like, the eel, you could just go the other way. Like, the horse yeah. can't go very far in the water. But the, I guess the eel, eel doesn't know that. Swim away. So the eel just sees, like, horse, little skinny horse feet and is like, I'm not having this. But the eel, really, all he had to do was turn around and swim so in the leave, other direction. The general fine. area, yeah. Or not do anything. Yeah. Well, horses ain't trying to eat eels. And horse, <laughs> horse doesn't even see eel. Yeah. Horses don't see that good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Kind of rude, yeah. honestly. Dick-ass eel. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking uncircumcised dick of an eel. <laughs> wow. All right, we're not shaming all of you who are not <laughs> circumcised. Just because we are is not a judgment call on our parts. Unless it's electrified, in which case, Jesus. And that was our final critter. That was a, yeah. That's how we end things. It's a good one to end on. <laughs> Just, the jolly jumping electrified pecker. A bunch of dick jokes. <laughs> that's, that's 
Sounds about right. Yep. We have new maniacs. Yeah, yeah. The highest tier in our Patreon. Meet uh, Anne. I'm not going to give her last name because it seems real, and I usually maintain some semblance of We anonymity. try not to dox our patrons. Yeah. We'll go with Anne B. You know mm. who you are, Anne. Thank you so much. Also a patron that we both know very well, and I will not give his last name either, but this is Steve. He is a very close friend of the podcast. We appreciate you. We also have some menaces, mm. and another one that we know very well, uh, Rob L., let's say, and he's one of the twins. We've talked about the twins before. We also have uh, Julie, J-U-L-E-E, extra extra E, Julie. I think she was here I, before. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a previous... Jules, is this you again? Did something happen with your card? Did somebody dox you? And we have a couple of new five-star reviews to shout out. Yeah, yeah. First one says, listen to this podcast, you will not regret it. Uh, my new favorite podcast, came across it by accident last night and haven't looked back. The quality is so consistent, even in the first episodes... Um, that is I, fucking blatant <laughs> lie. Appreciate the false advertising there in that context. It is Woo. great. It works for us. But I was uh, drunk in a Prius. I don't even <laughs> remember most of those episodes. I had no idea Shane and Duncan were new to this. The podcast sounds like it's been around for years. I mean, technically. It has been yeah. at this point. More than one, so I guess years. We're going to accept this five-star yeah. review in the spirit it was given instead of <laughs> continually trying to pick apart its factuality. So it says, the banter between Shane and Duncan is hilarious and makes the dark topics seem lighthearted somehow. This podcast is perfect for anyone if you're just starting to get into podcasts or you're searching for your next podcast to binge on on your drive to work. Yeah, yeah. Shane and Duncan love being interactive with their listeners. Listeners get to help pick the topics covered. They have an Instagram, Discord, three-level Patreon to interact with their listeners. Uh, all details are in the show notes. Wow, this is very, this is helpful. This Holy should, shit. This person should be writing for us. Yeah, seriously. Uh, thank You're you guys. <laughs> thank you guys. Keep up the awesome work. You'll find me eagerly awaiting your new releases. That is Madison BC via Apple Podcasts Australia. Appreciate you, Madison. Nicely done. Last one says, uh, fave podcast, exclamation point. These guys are awesome. Another exclamation point. Always like the enthusiasm. Yeah, seriously. The topics are always interesting and in-depth. Shane puts so much effort into the research and Duncan brings the perfect amount of comedy, exclamation point. Well done, boys. Keep up the great work. So another one. So many exclamation points. That's, it might be a little excessive at that point. But <laughs> at that point, it sounds more like speed than <laughs> it, happiness. It, but it's, it's fine. It's a little sarcastic <laughs> by, by now. It's so great. <laughs> I love it. And that was R. Marty 98 via Apple Podcast, also from Australia. We are getting some uh, down under love right now, which also sounds like the OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to OnlyFans. We're we're <laughs> so steps away. Non-sponsor of this show, but yeah. they should. They should sponsor us. They should. They should. I, I would show my feet. Um. <laughs> I will preemptively, defensively slap you. <laughs> if you You're going to freak up slap me for my foot show, huh? You trying to shame me? Yeah. Shame? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. All right. So this is the part. You know I do it. Go to Discord. Uh Meet all of the new people. We're up to 400 members now. There are so many people you could meet, talk with, chat with, exchange memes with that make no sense to us boomers. Just keep doing all the lovely things on Discord. And then, you know, go to Instagram and show Shane your feet. Because that would be funny don't, to me. Don't do that. You know, please do. Um, and then otherwise, and forever after. Knowledge is power. Sleep is overrated. I push the button.